All right, let's do question five. Um, the following equation represents the decomposition of N2O5 for which the rate law is rate equals K times the concentration of N2O5. Uh, and we're told that a, a sample of pure N2O5 is placed in a evacuated container and allowed to decompose at a constant temperature of 300 Kelvin. The concentration of N2O5 in the container is measured over a period of time and the measurements are recorded in the following table. So we have a table, um, AS, determine the value of the rate constant K for the reaction um, and include units in your answer. So one of the ways that we could go about doing this is using our integrated rate law. Um, if you look at your rate law, its uh, rate is equal to K times the concentration of N2O5. Um, and this will have an overall rate order of uh, first order. This is a first order kinetics problem. And if you remember your integrated rate law for first order kinetics is gonna be the uh, concentration, the natural log of the concentration at some time t is negative kt plus the natural log of your initial concentration. So you could you know, plug in values from this table here and uh, isolate k and figure out solve for k, but there is an easier way to do this. Since we are dealing with the first order um, kinetics problem here, we have a really simple formula. And that's uh, k is equal to the natural log of two divided by your half-life. Um, so the natural log of two is a constant. We just got to figure out what our half-life is. If you look at your table right here, your concentration, uh, it halves every 1.67 hours. Um, and that, that, uh, that pattern continues for the rest of the table. Every 1.67 hours, you can see that the concentration halves. So our half time is gonna be uh, 1.67 hours. So our K is gonna be the natural log of two over 1.67 hours. Um, and if you do out the math on that, the natural log of two uh, divided by 1.67, that is about 0 0.415 uh, per hour. And that's your unit. Um, there's no, it, the unit is just one over hours or hours to the negative first power. Let's go on to B. The following mechanism is proposed for the decomposition of N2O5. So we have three steps. Uh, identif identify which step of the proposed mechanism is the rate determining step. Justify your answer in terms of the rate log given. Since these are uh, elementary reactions, we can, kind of, we can just... Um, uh, use the, the reactants as our rates. So if we write the rate law um, from step one, let's do step one. Um, if you look, that's exactly what our rate is going to be. It should be that rate is equal to K times uh, N2 O5 to the first power. And that was our rate law for uh, the overall rate. So the overall reaction has a rate law of uh, K times N2 O5. And that's the rate law you get with step one. Uh, whoops, I got to write step one. If you do uh, the other steps, so step two, you'll get different rates. So since these are elementary reactions uh, or elementary steps, we can just kind of keep uh, these the same. We don't really have to change them. So it's going to be NO2 times NO3. And then step three, it's going to be a similar step. So uh, rate is equal to k times n2o5 uh, times no and if you realize both these are wrong and uh, the, the the first step uh, is what matches with our um, overall rate law so step one is going to be the rate determining step so step one let's go on to part c if this experiment was repeated in the same at the same temperature but with twice the initial concentration of N2O5, would the value of K increase, decrease, or stay the same? Explain your reasoning. Um, K, if you look at the equation for K, K is actually more of a thermodynamic constant. Um, so our Arrhenius equation, this is the Arrhenius, um, Arrhenius equation, the Arrhenius equation tells you that your K is dependent on your Arrhenius prefactor, which is kind of like a constant, um, your activation energy, which is Ea, and then temperature. Your K is not actually dependent on the concentration of 
your uh, reactants. So the K in this case would stay the same. So the value of K will remain the same because the temperature does not change and K is independent of concentration. Um, and that was question five. It's one of the shorter FRQs. Um, I hope this was helpful. I hope you're able to learn something. I have the rest of the questions in a playlist. They should pop up. Um, thank you again for watching and peace.